we as, the, as believers, we as members of the body of Christ, um, are not left without resources. We're not left without a means of dealing with these things. And so we want to talk to you this morning about um, our authority in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. So starting here in uh, Mark's gospel, the 16th chapter and the 15th verse, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized, I'm sorry, and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. Didn't say we should follow them signs. Said the signs will follow us. In my name. Everybody say, in his name. The wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shall they, um, they shall cast out devils, or literally the Greeks has exercised authority over demons. Um, they shall speak with new tongues. This does not mean you're going to, you know, you're going to go be a missionary and you're going to start speaking Swahili and you never heard it in your life. You're instantly going to start. It, he's talking about exactly what the Bible says. They were filled with the Spirit and began to speak in tongues. The, um, they shall take up serpents. That does not mean put them on the platform and get them cold, then have a dancing service with them. That means if you get bit like Paul did on the Isle of Miletus, that when he just shook it off and lived. Hallelujah. They drink any deadly thing. Don't drink strychnine just for the fun of it. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, one of, the, one, of the, one of the things that we ought to note here is this, that Paul writing here, I mean, not Paul writing, I'm sorry, Mark writing here, I've been teaching on Paul so much that I think Paul wrote everything. It's kind of like people who think Dad Hagen wrote Mark 11, 23. You know, he didn't. You know, it's not Hagen 11, 23, it's Mark. Glory to God. But when he's writing here, he, he did not say these signs shall follow the apostolic, uh, uh, the, the, the apostles of the Lamb the first century church, he said, these signs will follow those that believe. He said, that, you know, whoever believes in him, these signs are going to follow him, follow that, that believer, follow that person. The, and then the name, and what is it? It's not, it's not apostolic anointing, it is the name of Jesus that did this. Amen. This wasn't just for the 12 apostles of the Lamb, this was for every believer that believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. These signs were to follow them. They said, go preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Didn't say these signs shall follow them that are apostles. Didn't say these signs shall follow them that are pastors. Didn't say these signs shall follow them that are prophets. Didn't say these signs shall follow them that are teachers. Didn't say these signs shall follow them that are evangelists. He said these signs shall follow them that believe. Everybody say believers are to have signs following them. So the signs are to follow believers. Say that with me. Say the signs are to follow believers. See, believers are the ones that have signs following them. So don't get caught up with, the, you know, it is the, it is the ministry gifts or that have signs following. Now, there are signs that follow ministry gifts. There are anointings that go with ministry gifts. And, and in some cases, maybe there's a higher anointing on ministry gifts. Maybe, you know, someone, you know, we lay hands on the sick and they recover. Maybe somebody's got a, 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 an anointing where this, the gifts of the Spirit manifest and, and every blind person they ever lay hands on gets healed instantly. You know, well, that's, that's a special anointing. But Jesus said, that the signs shall follow the believer, will lay hands on the sick, and they shall. Everybody say, shall. shall. Now, there's no if, ands, or buts in the shall. I said there are no if, ands, or buts in a shall. You shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hello? Now, as with anything in the Bible, the only uh, parameter under which these things operate is faith. You got to believe. And then we say these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, we got too many unbelieving believers in the church. We need to get them full of believing believers. Amen. Amen. We need to get rid of the unbelieving belief system and get to a believing belief system. Why are they called believers? We believe the word. We believe Jesus. We believe what he said. The works that I do shall you do in greater than these because I go unto my Father. Isn't that what he said? Did not Jesus say that the church would do the works? Well, we get people saved and he didn't. He said, the works that I do shall you do. And, not or, and greater than these shall you do. Because I go unto the Father. Amen. 
So even if the greater work was getting people saved, we're still supposed to be casting out devils, raising the dead, healing the sick, carrying out, the, doing the exact things that Jesus did, and greater works. Dad Hagen had a series a, a number of years ago, and I, I have a copy of the old cassette tapes of it, doing the works of Jesus. Now, I think they put it on CD finally by now. But I, I, I have the old cassettes, doing the works of Jesus. He said a lot of people want to get caught up with doing the greater works, and they're not even doing the works yet. They're all caught up on the greater works. And he said, but he didn't say greater works than, than, than these shall you do. And leave that. He said, the works that I do shall you do. And greater than these, because, now here, because. What happened when he went to the Father? Amen. What happened when Jesus went to the Father? Well, um, one of the things we know is that when he ascended up to the throne of God, um, and in Philippians chapter 2, if you want to kind of run over there, or if you're, if you're hooked up with Scotty, maybe he can beam you over. Hallelujah. Over in Philippians chapter 2, starting down in verse 9, we have it here, and it says this, Wherefore God also highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Now, wait a second. So when, when, what happened? Remember, Jesus said, these things that shall you do that I do, and greater than these because I go unto the Father. Now, here it says here, wherefore God highly exalted him. Well, he went to the Father. Amen? And gave, given him a name that is above every name. Glory to God. Everybody say, thank God for the name. Thank God, thank God for the name of Jesus. Thank God that Jesus' name has power. Come on now, thank God Jesus' name has authority. Hallelujah. See, we can get caught up with, uh, you know, why can't I do this and why can't I do that and forget about how great his name is. He said, these things shall you do and greater because I go to the Father. Philippians says he exalted him and gave him a name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Now, the King James has the word things here italicized, meaning it's not in the Greek. So he really says, every knee shall bow in heaven, earth, and under the earth. Not things, beings. Spiritual beings. Spiritual forces. Demonic forces have to bow their knee to the name. I said the demonic forces have to bow their knee to the name. The, the spirits that enforce sickness have to bow their knee to the name. The spirits that enforce poverty had to bow their knee to the name. We need to get up and start using the name with, with authority. Start using the name with confidence. Start using the name like it really has invested in it what it has vested in it. We can't hope so, maybe so, uh, you know, get caught all up in the moving by hooks and crooks and somehow, some way. We've got to come against these things with an understanding that God has granted unto the church the right to use the name of Jesus, glory to God, to combat spiritual forces and spiritual attacks and spiritual enemies, glory to God, and open our mouth under the authority of heaven itself where there was a name given unto the Lord Jesus Christ when he was exalted. And what did he say? And when he, when he appeared to remember he came back and saw them. He said, you go out into the world and preach the gospel. And in my name, what name? The name that he was given when he was highly exalted. Glory to God. E.W. Kenyon was preaching on, on, uh, uh, in a sermon one time on the name of Jesus. And this lawyer came up to him at the end of the service and said, did, uh, did Jesus give us power of attorney to use his name? And um, Dr. Kenyon looked at him and said, well, you know, um, I don't know what he, he said, you know, what does that mean? He said, well, if language means anything, but you read that scripture, Jesus gave the church power of attorney. And, uh, and so Dr. Kenny said, well, what does that mean? What, what, what significance is that? He said, it depends on how much is back of it. Hallelujah. Now, we know this, the power of attorney in, in just real simple terms means that I can give Grant Benny the right to sign, use my name. I can also give him limited power of attorney. I can say you have the right to sign, I can, sign, I can set up with a lawyer or contract and say you have the right to go sign my name on this piece of paper for this particular issue once and one time only. Or I can just give him unlimited, you have the right to, use, you know, to oversee my estate, to oversee my, my, my financial dealings, to oversee everything. And I give you blanket power of attorney, you can sign my checking account, whatever. It's all depending on what's behind it. Well, heaven's behind the name of Jesus. 
How do you know? Because the Father gave it to him. I said the Father gave it to him. There's no greater than the Father. He is the first person of the Godhead. Jesus is the second person. The Holy Ghost is the third. Remember Jesus said in his ministry, I only do those things which I see my Father do. And then Jesus said of the Holy Ghost, when he's come, he won't speak of himself. He'll only speak of me. And what I've shown him. Praise God. Are you here? So God the Father stands behind the name of Jesus. Can everybody say glory? glory. That means all of heaven, all the resources, all the authority, now all the exousia and all the dunamis of heaven are behind the name of Jesus. Woo! <clears throat> Amen. Remember Jesus said, he said, uh, behold, I give you power. Talking to the disciples one day. I give you exousia. And he says this, I give you authority over all the dunamis of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Whatever power or might Satan has, there is an authority out of heaven that is greater, that is stronger, that is more powerful, that can bring it to a halt and cause it to cease in its ability to overcome you. Glory to God. And it's in the name of Jesus. I should have had four runners by now. Now, we're going to go out here next week. If you don't change, we're going to go ahead and put it in the Faith and Victory Church of the first, of the first Frozen. Are you here? We're not the church of the first frozen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're a church on fire. I was saying that this morning. We're a church on fire. Right. Glory to God. There is a name that is above every name. And so when God highly exalted him, he gave him a name. Then verse 11 says, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus received that name. And in that name is vested all the authority of heaven. Hallelujah. Jesus told the church over in Matthew's gospel. Look over there. At the end of Matthew's gospel. Verse 16 said, The eleven disciples went away into Galilee and into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All, of, all power... Again, this word is, is, is the word for authority. It's, it's, it's authoritative power or exousia, E-X-O-U-S-I-A. It's authority. Now, authority is of no good or value if there's no power behind it. Dunamis power or, or, or miraculous power or a force. Uh, you can walk out here and you can go down to the grocery store and buy you a, um, you know, a New York City police badge, you know, a little plastic thing there. They, they usually have NYPD on there, you know, because it's the biggest city in the country, so they use their, they don't put Greensboro on there, but, you know, you go out in Mill Street and hold that and say, stop in the name of the law. They'll just run right over you. Well, there's no power behind that. Go out here as a Greensboro police officer and stand up and say, stop in the name of the law. Now, he physically can't stop your car or stop your tank or stop your truck, but if you don't, if you run over him, you're going to find out how much power is behind that badge. And you're going to find out in a hurry. Because a bunch of very, very, very angry police officers with assault weapons and all kinds of stuff are going to, with bulletproof vests are going to show up wherever you are. And if you sneeze wrong, they're going to shoot you, make you Swiss cheese. All right? Now, how much authority? Remember, it says here, I've given the church authority. See, we don't have to physically wrestle Satan's dunamis. Remember this? The, 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 Paul wrote to the church at Corinth and said this. He said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Glory to God. What's he saying? He's saying that the enemy might have power. He might have, a, he might have dunamis power, you know, in the natural or in the, in the spirit. But he has, he has a power to bring things against you. But you have a weapon that is not a natural weapon. You don't have to go out and fight the enemy in your flesh. There is a supernatural authority or power that you have called the name of Jesus. And you can speak against that thing in his name and cause all the power of the enemy to cease. Amen? By all power, both in heaven and earth, is given unto me, Jesus said. Therefore, you go in in my name. So we need to rise up. Say, rise up. Rise up. We need to put the name back in our mouth. 
And let me say something. We don't need to be speaking the name like this. Oh, Jesus, what am I going to do? That's not authority. Hello? I said, that's not authority. Authority is not what am I going to do. Authority is, I command you in the name of Jesus to stop. Satan, take your hands off my money. You tormenting devil, go in Jesus' name. It don't mean you won't have to face any trouble. That's why he gave you the name, because you're going to face trouble. In the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Woo! I'm, I'm glad Jesus didn't stop when he said, in the world, you'll have tribulation. Now, most of the church stopped there. They're running around tribulating because Jesus said we're going to have tribulation. They're going around putting up with it saying, I don't understand what the Lord was doing. I don't know why God's doing this. He didn't stop there. Woo, glory to God. He didn't stop. Come on, somebody. He didn't stop. He said, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Amen. Why are you going to be of good cheer, Jesus? I've overcome the world. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you can take your name and you can take his name and enforce his overcoming. Somebody, come on now. I've been, I've, been beat, I've been beat senseless by, by, by finances. That's all right. Start talking to, those, start talking to your money. And start talking to that, those, those oppressive spirits that are bringing financial hardship. Start talking to them in the name. And I'm not talking about saying, oh, Jesus, what am I going to do? Hallelujah. Say, Jesus, I know exactly what we're going to do. Devil! In the name. Take your hands off my money. Ministering spirits, I commission you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go bring my money in. In Jesus' name. Now, don't stop them back as soon as you get done praying, going, oh, no, I don't know what I'm going to do. A bill came I wasn't expecting. God knew about it. I told somebody, that, I've been telling people this lately. I've been preaching in the church, too. Whatever you're facing, whatever came your way, Whatever just showed up yesterday and you weren't expecting it did not catch God off guard. That's right. He knew it was coming. And let me tell you something. He didn't know it was coming and just sit there and go, well, I guess going to, uh, Jerry is going to end up with his feet where his head was two seconds before. We'll just sit here and watch it and record it for uh, when he gets to heaven and see how funny that looked. No, God knew it was coming and made a means of escape. Hallelujah. That you with the temptation may be able to bear it. Now he's not, see, bearing it, may, he's made a means of escape. Go, go study your Bible. He said that there's no temptation taking you but such as common to man. But God is, um, God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted, or suffer means to allow, King James, uh, or as I like to say, King Jimmy, you know, uh, suffer means to allow you to be tempted above what you're able. Whatever you're facing, let me say that, let's, let's, let's put this in some English you can understand. Whatever you're facing, you're equipped to overcome. That's what he's saying right here. He will not suffer. You'd be tempted with what you're able with the temptation. Also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. How do you bear it? By you escape out of that trouble. Bearing it is not sitting there and getting crushed by it. Bearing it is escaping out of that trouble. Amen? Well, how do we do that? This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. What's our faith in? Our faith is in the fact that Jesus said, the works I do shall you do in greater than these because I go unto my Father. What happened when he went to the Father? He, gave, he was highly exalted. He was given a name that was above every name. And what did Jesus say to do with the name? He said, you know, going to all the world and preach the gospel in my name. You'll cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, drink any deadly thing. It won't hurt you. And you'll to heal, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Glory to God. It means that you're going to walk around with an authority and a power to overcome in every circumstance and every situation of life. And there is nothing that has come your way that you are not equipped to handle and to overcome and to come out victorious. Glory to God. How do you know? Because the apostle Paul over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 finally got so excited. He said this. He said, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Always causes us to triumph. 
<clears throat> not sometime, not part of the time, not half the time. Always. When we understand our place in Christ, when we understand the authority we have in Jesus Christ, when we understand that his name is above every name, then we can look, we can look right smack dab into the eyes of that, that temptation, right smack dab into the eyes of that circumstance, right smack dab into the eyes of all that's going on around us and say, you will not take me down. I'm the head and not the tail. I go over only and not beneath. And because Jesus is my Lord, he's granted unto me authority to use his name. And I speak to you, devil, in the name of Jesus. Stop! Take your hands off my money. Take your hands off my body. <coughs> Take your hands off my mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Nathan wrote that new song, I'll Not Be Moved. Makes me think of the old church song. We, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall, just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. That's my generation. Got a new song. I like the new song. Because it's a song of the heart. Satan's coming. Satan's coming to steal your joy. Satan's coming to steal everything he can steal. Satan's doing this. But you've got to make a decision that I'll not be moved. I'm going to stand on the rock. Jesus is the rock. Hallelujah. Let's just act like a bunch of old full gospel businessmen and start walking around going, Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I like that we used to add this song. One, two, he is coming and I am going. Hallelujah. He is coming back. Glory to God. That's the blessed hope of the church. Somebody say amen. amen. I've been preaching better than you saying amen this morning. So y'all know what too, don't you? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus, is, Jesus gave us that name to use. Hallelujah. And said to go preach and then use that authority. And we need to understand <clears throat> that we are not helpless. We're not, we're not left without, a, without recourse. See, so many people leave, lose their hope in the church because they get to this point that somehow or another they believe that they're without recourse to get out of this mess they're in. But the Word's already told us he's makes, he makes a way of escape. See, we leave out that part and say, well, you just got to bear it. No, 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 no. Don't you understand the way you bear it is you escape from it. That's, that's what Paul said. Whoever wrote that, what was that? What chapter? I don't remember what that was. Y'all pulled it up so fast and took it back down. First, Paul said that. There's no temptations taking you, but such is common to man. But God is what? Then you know, in one place, Paul started writing, you know, if we do this, he'll do that, we'll do this. But he, got, he says, if we're not faithful, yet he abideth faithful. God cannot be unfaithful. There's one of the reasons in his life, there's an area in his character that will not allow him to be unfaithful. Amen? So there's, there's things that are coming your way. And they say, you're not the only one who's ever faced it. Somebody else has dealt with it before. Somebody else has faced it before. Somebody else had to deal with it. Some people didn't make it. Some did. But you're not facing it. You're not all, you're, you're not, you're not all by myself. And you're not Mr. Lonely. I'm so lonely. I, that's not you. Whatever you're dealing with, somebody's dealt with before. But God's faithful. I said, God's faithful. And when that temptation comes, he's going to say, now look, they can't handle this devil. You can't put, you can't put, you can't, you just can't take them out with something that they never, they, they're not ready to handle. And I like that. God put, God put parameters on the devil and says, look, now I know that, you know, that temptation is something that you work in. But I'm going to limit your temptation abilities. If you're facing it, God's already said you can handle it. Amen. Now handle it how? Escape. Come out. I'm telling you, we need to have more fiery furnace experiences in the church. 
We need to have more lion's den experiences in the church. I don't mean being cast into the lion's den. <clears throat> I don't mean being cast into the furnace. I mean in the spiritual sense that you may be going through the fire of life, but you need to come out like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right. Hallelujah. You need to get in there and understand that there's a fourth man in the furnace with you. Glory to God. How many of you have ever heard Oral Roberts or Jerry Seville preach the four, fourth man in the fiery furnace? Who is this fourth man? I'll tell you who he is. Hallelujah. He's Jacob's ladder. He's the wheel within the wheel. Glory. I mean, that's a good sermon. It'll preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is the one who was and is and is to come. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I want you to know this morning that you might be in the fiery furnace, but I want you to know you're not there by yourself. The same fourth man that was in the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is in the furnace with you today. And you can come out without the smell of smoke on you. Their hands and feet were bound when they were thrown in, but they looked in there and saw four men walking about. It burned the ropes. But they came out unsinged and without even the smell of smoke on them. <clears throat> now, y'all all know this. You can just cook on the grill and smell like smoke. I did it yesterday. I came in the house and, you know, went somewhere and sat down and went, man, I smell like the grill. You ain't got to go get a bath because you smell all smoky. I ain't talking about Robinson and the miracles. I'm talking about smoky. Camping in Boy Scouts, I hate that. You go sit by the campfire and, you know, they always used to say that, sm that smoke follows ugly folks. I finally figured, hey, it follows pretty folks. Because every campfire I get around, it follows me around. Thank you. We're going to restore. Cap had been banished, so he's been restored now. Hallelujah. He, they came out of that. The fire of the furnace was so hot that the men who took them bound and threw them in, the heat killed them. Go study your Bible. The guards that took them to throw them into the furnace, the heat, when they opened the doors, they were throwing them in, killed them. So it's not like it was, you know, uh, that one of these gurus walking on a bed of coals or something. <clears throat> Are you here? We're talking high enough to kill the men that threw him in. Daniel went into the lion's den. And the king, went, the king couldn't sleep all night, and Daniel just, just took a nap. Oh, church, if we'll learn to understand, just like Jesus when he was on the boat, said, let us go over to the other side, and the storm came, and they had to go wake him up. He said, don't you care that we perish? Stood up and told the storm to be still and says, how is it you had no faith? Why? Because he had said, let's go to the other side. Hallelujah. How was he going to get the other side of this boat saying? He was going to float on his pillow asleep. <laughs> or just get him walk. You know, oh, I got to walk. Hello? Church, the name of Jesus has power. The name of Jesus is authority. And we need to stop acting like it's, you know, it's a cuss word. How many movies have you ever been to that went, oh, Muhammad? Well, I'll be Krishna. You ever heard of anything like that? No. But they'll use Jesus. They'll use, they'll, they'll use God as the dammer. Hello? They'll say Jesus and Jesus Christ in ways that are not honoring or glorif glorifying his name. They'll say it in a way that is derogatory. And see, we get around that so much, we, forget, we, we start forgetting that is the name that was given unto him who was highly exalted. That causes demons to tremble. That all of heaven stands and bows, or actually falls and bows in reverence to the name. That all the earth, at one, some point, all humanity that has ever lived, will bow their knee and declare that Jesus is Lord. Sickness must bow its knee in response to the authority of that name. Hallelujah. Poverty 
must bow its knee in recognition of the authority of that name. Church, we need to recognize the authority of that name and take it into our mouth and then on purpose begin to come against the enemy and say no more. We draw the line. And not only do we draw the line, we advance our line. It's time to stop drawing a line and setting up defense. It is time to draw a line and advance on the enemy. That song, I don't know who wrote it. I know Shekinah Glory did it. I'm going to the enemy's camp. I'm going to take back what he took from me. I'm going to the enemy's camp. I'm going to take back my victory. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. We need, you need to sing songs like that. You don't need to sing, oh, I've been through the mud and through the flood. I'm going through the blood, and I might make it in somehow, some way, by some hook or crook, by the skin of my teeth. Dear Lord God, please let me get in somehow, some way. <coughs> the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, but the violent take it by force. It's time to start taking stuff back by force. That's enough, devil. We're, not, we're, we're tired of sitting in the bunker hunkered down. We need to be like the lepers sitting outside the gate. I got some kind of real weird feedback coming out of the, the monitor up here. I mean, it sounds like rain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you here? We need to advance with authority and say no more. Hello? When you get up and say, that's it. We're going and taking back what the devil's stolen. We're going in and saying, nope, I'm, I'm getting my health back. Amen? I don't know if we can rewrite that country song. That country song is that's what you get when you play country song backwards. Get your car back, get your dog back, get your first two wives back, get your kids back, all that kind of stuff. When you, somehow do the name of Jesus. That's what you get when you use the name of Jesus with authority. Get your money back, get your health back, you know. That's what you get when you use the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Got to do something. Y'all are not something. Shout! <laughs> that name is above every name. That name has been highly exalted. That name is the name, and the Word of God says this, there is no under, other name under heaven whereby men must be sozoed. Saved, healed, preserved, made whole, delivered, prospered. But at the name of Jesus. Whew. Now, honestly, I know people do this. They, they pray in the name of Christ. That's not his name. The Bible says that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Well, I mean, well, you know, you know what I mean? I, I, I had to stay with the Bible. I can't say, well, you know, God understands Christ means that. He said the name of Jesus. So I have to stay with what the Word says. We can get into habits, but I'm going to stay with the Word. How about you? Now, if you're going to stay with the Word, let's do what the Word said. Let's, be name, not, let's not be name droppers. Let's be name users. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Power in the name, power in the name, power in the name of Jesus. Demons have to go because of what they know. They know there's power in the name of the Lord. Now, let me say this. The demons believe and tremble. The church needs to understand the authority that's been granted us in that mighty name and start using it. Amen? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. Amen? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Demons will have to flee. Great course. 
Those are all songs we, that we used to sing 20 and 30 years ago that, that we sung because we, we were teaching and believing and acting and using the name of Jesus. We're under the greatest attack that the church has seen heretofore, particularly in America. America is in such a state that God's having to send a, a, a revivalist to America to call it to repentance so America will be saved. When for centuries we were the ones that sent the missionaries, God's sending missionaries here to save America. And there'll have to be repentance in the church. But God's bringing it because we're, we're going to stand up and use the name. We're going to speak the name. And we're not going to use it in fear. We're going to use it in faith. When the devil shows up. I, I, I'd love the story of Brother Summerall. We'll close with this. Y'all you know, have heard it. I've told it before. Brother Summerall, I've heard Brother Summerall tell it. He's in his bed one night and the bed starts shaking and kind of lifted up and moved across the room. He woke up. He said, devil, put it down in Jesus' name. The devil went, plop, get out of here in the name of Jesus. He could sense the evil spirit. They said, wait, come back here. Put it back where you found it. Amen. Most of us be going, oh, God, oh, God, Jesus, there's a, there's a demon in my house, Jesus. There's a demon in my room. Ah! Get the holy water out. Sprinkle all, all over the place. Get the Holy Water hose. <laughs> when you know who you are in Christ and you know your authority in the name, demons have to obey you. Come back and put it back where you found it. They didn't. Now get out of here. Wigglesworth one night said he heard a noise. In the living room, got him walked down the hall. The devil had manifested himself supernaturally, sitting in his rocker chair rocking. He looked at him and said, oh, it's you, and went back to bed. <laughs> oh, it's you. And no power over me. Has no, see, we get all freaked out. We're going to call in the whole holy, holy oil group. They'll come in and, and, and pour buckets of oil all over that chair. We'll burn it and, and sacrifice it and say there's a devil in that chair. Just they have to obey the name. Just obey the name. Did you ever did you see Jesus freak out when Satan showed up? No. Nope. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Thank you for encouragement to use the name of Jesus in daily life. Use the name of Jesus to defeat the enemy. Use the name of Jesus to walk in victory. We thank you, Father God, that we're, we're stirred up this morning to stop living in fear but to live in faith, to live in an understanding that there's power in the name and that Satan and every, every spiritual being under his authority must bow and submit to the authority of the spoken mighty name of Jesus in the mouth of believers when they make a declaration they must obey. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let me say one more thing. Angels have to obey you. So, you, you know, the Bible says they're sent as ministering servants to the heirs of righteousness. So we command them in Jesus' name. Now, you can't make them go do something that's, that's against the laws of God. But the Lord spoke to Brother Hagin one time. He said, he said, stop praying about money and just... Declare what you need and send forth the ministry spirits to go get it. Go bring my money in in Jesus' name. So we declare the needs met at Faith and Victory Church. All the debt paid and supernatural abundant overflow. And we commission the ministry spirits to go out and bring the money in in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now you do that in your personal life. Start speaking the name. Amen. Let's stand up.